Okay, there now it's go. recording. Hey. Got it. Okay, all yours, Bob. <laughs> recording. And then just don't uh, stop the recording when you're done and before you go to another another room, if you do. Sure. The only okay, room Bob, all yours. The only room I'm going to won't have a recording. Right. All right. Why would I want to go to another room? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, everywhere. Thanks, David. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. Okay, I'll give you uh, somewhat of a brief presentation on Winter Express. Um, I'll talk about uh, FEMA training that I recently went through. I'll give a quick description of Winlink Express. I'll demonstrate a little bit of Winlink Express. I won't go into a lot of detail. Practice, practice, practice. Then I'll turn it over to Don N7WTR, who will talk about our packet infrastructure. And then from there, we'll turn it over to John KL7RI for his latest whiz bangs uh, called a gateway. And here we go. Back in May, I traveled to Emmitsburg, Maryland, along with 74 other members of our Regional Emergency Operations Center Crisis Action Team. These members worked for many of our local Reno, Sparks, and Washoe County agencies that would respond when the IOC is activated for a major emergency event. This trip was a week-long earthquake training at the FEMA Emergency Management Institute. Most of the people that went are new to the positions they would report to up here at the EOC when it is activated. So everyone was trained on how to work together during or after a major event, in this case, an earthquake. My goal was to meet the new people that I would provide damage reports to, such as building damage, road damage, and utilities or whatever else ham radio, you guys out in the field can send to me here at the regional AOC. While attending the training, I began to review the methods we have as ham radio operators to report damage to the AOC. Since there are over 2,000 hams in Washoe County on paper listed in QRZN, reports by voice using VHF, UHF, HF, or DMR or Fusion will be slow. I can only fit so many people in the radio room <laughs> at the REOC to accept these reports. Sending messages by voice is important, but the message must be written on an ICS 213 message form. If it isn't documented, it didn't happen. Whoop. There we go. Come on. All right. Let's go to the buttons instead of the damn mouse. <laughs> the message to send a message by voice requires the use of the ITU phonetic alphabet, International Tele Telecommunications Union. These are um, designed by the gurus that this is the list of the least confused words to describe a letter or a number, such as Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Numbers one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, and so on, to spell out words to reduce or eliminate, reduce errors at least. <laughs> And a faster way to send out emergency messages by using email. More accurate, not as prone to errors, but not just any email. We have the capability to send emergency emails without a local connection to the internet using packet radio. Then connecting to the internet far away from your current location. We'll be using a free software email program called WinLink Express. You should download this software to your personal computer to learn how to use it. If the internet is available, use it, and I'll show you where that is. A great way to become proficient with the software. As long as you got internet, use it. The software allows you to send emails to a remote radio that's connected to the internet. It has to be connected to the internet. But primary path of communications is the internet. With packet cap capabilities, you can transmit direct 
radio to radio if you have a clear shot. So you don't need, don't need the internet if you go peer to peer direct communication. You have a local internet connection, go ahead and use it. Become proficient with the software and we'll teach you how to send an email by radio. Go to the, uh, go to the website, winlink.org. Download the program Winlink Express, also called RMS Express, its original name. This is what you'll see when you open uh, the website, the web page. You want to go and click on the Book of Knowledge. At that point, um, you will see, Darren, are you seeing my cursor at all? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a, a good Wikipedia article on it. There's uh, Winlink Express video series by uh, K6RJF, I guess it is. Uh, and you can download and view Win, uh, Winlink Express training series by Wave Talkers. So these are all links that you can go to to get education. Best of all, you can download and install, install Winlink Express. And the soft, all of this information helps you get through there. Read the help, play with it, and then back, go back and read the help again. Radio emails on Winlink Express, you'll find as you learn Winlink Express, there are many templates, also known as forums, available to send official messages for emergency management. And I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Don will probably follow up with some more. The field name and the contents of the form. Oh, wait, sorry. The template opens in your browser. Fill in the form and submit it to the email. The field name and the contents of the form is transmitted with the body of the email. We're only talking 300 baud, folks. So we don't want to send an entire HTML, or HTML form. We want to send just the, the text information. You can send the send to any amateur radio operator that is registered on the software by using the software by entering their call sign in the to field. Or you can just enter an email address and it'll go someone's email that doesn't have the software. You can attach a small spreadsheet or a photo to the email. Take a picture of a damaged building or something with your cell phone. Transfer to your laptop using Bluetooth and attach it to the email on OneLink Express. Crop the image to reduce the size of the photo then reduce the size to less than 120 kilobytes and it will go. And it's very it's usable. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's let me open my copy of Winlink Express, and that's what it looks like. I uh, you go into the settings. <clears throat> no, we're not we're still in PowerPoint. Pardon me, still in the PowerPoint. Correct. Oh, yeah. Hang yeah. On. Let me see if I can get out of there. Do, 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 do. All right, let's go. Uh, go to the PowerPoint. There you go. Is, oops, I lost my screen share. Hang on a second. All right, let's try this. Is that better? Yes. Hey. Hey. You're there. <laughs> All right, there's what there's what Winlink Express looks like. Uh, you go up here after you install it and go to your settings and put your data in. Call sign. Uh, when you register with Winlink, it give you a password or Oh no, I guess you have to get, we have to do that, don't we, Don? Yes, we make up our own password. Our own They're password. case sensitive. And you also want to enter the recovery email address. Right here, I use my uh, GBIS account. And that way, if I have problems, I can request uh, the password be sent to this email. So nobody, not everybody can see it up here. Anyhow, the stats, my address, uh, grid square, and uh, I registered, so I don't keep getting the pop-up. Gives them a little bit of money to, to play with. All right. 
Uh, any other uh, type, you can just explore this and use the stuff you want. You can manage messages here on this menu, export, import, forms, and I'll show you those in a minute. And just like any other email, you come over here, you open the email and it's from me and I'm going to send it. Now I can send it to just a call sign. The call sign club call for the emergency operations center is care 7 eoc So if you want to send damage reports to care 7 eoc so I get them up there or whoever's operating packet will get it. You can put in regular email addresses here. You can copy other call signs. So once they're once you download a uh, uh, WinLink Express, your call sign is registered. So you, you can send emails to just the call sign, or you can, I can go in here and put in, and it will go to my email address as well. <coughs> Subject, I'm not very creative. Oops. That's one. And whatever you want to do in here, you put the address of the damage, send it off. But always, if you're sending from a club call, such as KR7 EOC, you should sign it down here that you sent it. In this case, it is my, my call sign. But when I send an email from KR7 EOC, then uh, that's how I would spawn. So it's just a simple email, just like you're, you're used to uh, every day. Now, for the moment, I will post now to the outbox. There it is in the outbox sitting there waiting to be sent. To send it, you go up to open session and it'll come through. And if you've got, uh, if you've got your packet, in this case, I'm sending it by the element internet, and I'll show you that in a minute. But anyway, the message is now going and it's disconnected. So when you open the various modes, here's what you see. The default at the top is Telnet, which is the internet. If you want to send using a TNC and a radio, you got packet wind link. If you got a pack tour TNC, which is about $2,000. Uh, I don't know what robust packet wind link is. Maybe John or Don could talk about it. It's another pack tour device. Huh? It is another pack tour device. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, Don or John and I know Don, one or the other, will talk about Vera, which is faster than packet. Here's peer to peer, which is uh, packet to uh, direct to another person without the internet uh, and so on. But these are all the various modes. So when you install the software, the default up here is Telnet. And if you have an active Wi-Fi router, you can connect to the internet. Everything will go through. Now, every time you should always make sure that every time you open WinLink Express, you'll get a notice that either the forms are going to be updated or, uh, or the software is going to be updated. And they do that very frequently. So it's always a good idea. So open another email and I can go to again, KR7EOC, but I want to attach a form. So I click on attachments, oops, sorry, wrong one. Click on templates, which are forms. Do you see this? Now, these are all the major categories of all the forms that are available to us. This is frequently updated. Just about once a day when you open it, this set of forms gets updated. Either they add new ones, modify the ones that are in there. Now, working up here in the Emergency Operations Center, we use um, ICS forms, and that's the incident command system. So uh, here's the ICS-202. Here is the ICS-213, which is the general message form. As soon as it will open, Earth to computer. Double click. I Double did. Click. I did. There we go. 
Hey. Got it a bit slower. Okay. And it is supposed to open my browser. Do you see this? Yep. Your browser is probably going to be in a window that we won't see. Oh, crap. All right. Well, well we, see a, we see huh? a message form. That's not the browser, though. Huh? We don't see the form itself open. We just have the, the standard WinLink message open. Oh, okay, phooey. All right, well, I guess I can't demonstrate that then. It won't show. I have some screen screen captures of that I can show. So, I also saw, oops, what did I do? I just killed it. Oh, man. Um, somewhere, let me see if I can bring it up. Well, I didn't uh, didn't realize that was going to happen. Well, I guess I can't demonstrate that. If you got you some screen, can, Bob. Let me let me just tell you how to do it. If you temporarily in your Zoom screen, if you close your uh, stop screen sharing, show you what to do. You can leave, yeah. Now start screen sharing. You click on the green button, and then on the top left, it's got it says screen or or desktop or something. That first yeah. top big one. Click on that one, and then you can move around, and you should be able to see anything on, on your desktop. Now we see that. It's coming up. Okay, now we can see the wind link there, and now we can see your Zoom thing. Yeah, so just go to whatever you want. Well, we have, we, and, all right, let's go back to uh, templates. Okay. My audio is hell. Do you hear me? Yeah, you're yeah, fine. We hear you. Okay, my audio has gone to hell. Uh, here's the ICS forms. Instead yeah. of the radiogram, come on. There's going. Oh, there, right now. Can... Okay, so there's the message form. I'm not very creative. Or do I don't type worth the damn either. Is that right? Yeah. I Oops. think what you're showing is how the form, how you have, you put the data in the form when you send it, it right. extracts the data, it sends it, and it remarries the form back together. Very cool. Okay. And you got to add the date. So you click on that. If you want this time off the computer, you click on that. And it's approved by. Okay. And now you submit it. Oops. Oh, yeah. Forgot. Kelly Etrevia, I don't remember how to spell it, is our emergency manager. See, it, it warns you when you're not completely filled out. You click submit, okay. And now it closes, it, it dumps all of the, dumps the field names. Let's see if I can get back to the email now. What's this? Has not been posted? Closed. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so we go back to um, look at your email. Where did the email? Oh, you closed the the email went away. Yeah, you closed the email. Do alt, do just do an alt tab, hold the alt key down, and press tab until you get to your email, assuming it's open. One more uh, tab. One more said tab. I killed, huh? It's gone. One more. Two more. One more. There you go. Try that. No, like that's no, no. Not your, that's not your email. Uh, okay. He said I killed it. It's gone. Okay. Well, okay. Anyway, <laughs> best laid plans. I haven't played with this on the online. It's not in the outbox, so it did get. No, it, it's gone.
Now, when you um, when you set up WinLink Express, it will create another folder with your call sign. And in this, we have loaded two things, two of uh, two cert forms that are value for evaluation. And I'm going to double click on this one. And I'll show you one in a minute. But this is a damage report that we can accumulate. And I used, I sent, uh, some of my team sent me some damage reports, which I'll show you in a few minutes, uh, to Emmitsburg. And I forward them along to the uh, uh, damage assessment team leader. And they loved it. They thought it was great. And from there, I, so what I can do is I print this. Let me go back in and uh, go back up to, go back up to, hello, there we go. Let me go over to now. I'm gonna go over to, uh, to KR7EOC and my message never went through. That's right, it killed it. Okay, well, here's a damage assessment exercise. And some of the damage assessment reports, here's a damage report sent by uh, uh, Stacy Mahoney, who's the president of the VA Ham Club. And as soon as it opens, do you, oh, that was her damage photo. Do you see that? Yeah. That's her swing, swing set that got damaged because the screws got loose and the wind dropped it down. So let me kill this. It's not a damage report specifically, but her email says slide came off playset. So in other words, here's a, an attached, excuse me, blow my little brains out. Here's a um, basically the, a description of what the photo is. So she attached the photo to the email and sent it to me back at Emmitsburg, and this was the description of the problem. Um, let's see who we got. We had another, uh, here's another photograph, attached photo. And uh, here's a heavy, whoop. It's low, there you go. And there's heavy equipment blocking a road. It's not, it, it's just showing the effectiveness of that's a, a 120 kilobyte photo. So it's definitely usable and I can save these or print them as a, uh, a Microsoft uh, PowerPoint and go into Web EOC, which is our operating system here in the EOC and connect on the damage assessment team leader and send this photograph and the email contents to them and they can react on it much faster than trying to describe it by voice uh, and and uh, uh, sending a report that way. Somewhere is, uh, let's go down. I think here, here's some that were sent, also sent to Emmitsburg. Here's a rapid damage assessment form uh, that's been filled out. And that was sent by Doug, W7DBE. But you can see he's got four addresses, the status, water leak, uh, it's, uh, the roads are inaccessible, unaccessible. Here's um, another address, damaged build, uh, house, uh, one person injured. It's uh, also, uh, oh, this says no access. There is access. I read that wrong. But anyhow, this could go, I can print this as a Microsoft PDF attach it to an email within web EOC that goes directly to the damage assessment uh, team leader. And uh, he can then forward it on. If, uh, if their building is on fire, um, let's see where are, oh, up here, here's fires. If, is it on fire? He can send it to fire. He can send this to, uh, um, uh, yeah, what's the word I want? Okay. Utilities. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Senior moment, I'm allowed. Uh, structure, um, uh, anybody for search and rescue, uh, and again, uh, roads access or whatever. So this form we have available. 
uh, and if we send the files to you, you can add them into your personal folder, as I showed you here in uh, uh, BDBB. In, in uh, uh, Webby, or web, yeah, not Webby, you'll see in uh, WinLink Express. But that gives you kind of an idea. And so that's a, a quick demo. We, uh, we like to practice uh, using this whenever we can. Uh, every uh, Friday, John, who's going to be talking in a minute um, at, uh, at St. Mary's, he does, even though the hospitals are checking in, we're still trying to get them up and running on Wednesday so they can start checking in and, and so on. Anybody, uh, let's see, where am I? Let's get back to, oh, my PowerPoint even went away. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still in all tab, it, it might be underneath. Uh, Pardon me? Uh, PowerPoint might be underneath. You hold the all key down and you keep pressing tab until you see it. Do, 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 do. Here we go. There you go. Uh, yeah, to the right. No, that's my Word document. Oh, well, my document. Right, hang on a second. I'll bring it back bring up. It back up. Yeah, sure. It'll take just a second. In the meantime, anybody got any questions? I'm full of it. I'll picture? tell you where to go. I've never done the picture thing. If you have the picture and your PCs are attached, you're attaching just like you're attaching a form. I can show that in line. Coming up. I don't know if I have a, if I have a picture available. I chatter, but uh, so anyway, practice, practice, practice. Go to winlink.org, download the software, register your call, look at the training materials, send me an email to KR7EOC. During your Friday morning net, send an email to KL7REI and KR7EOC, and I'll re well, try to reply to you. Let me know which, ho oh, this was, uh, sorry, I missed that one. This, this was also a presentation I did for the hospital games. And send me your personal email address. Well, that never happened. Anyway, where are we? Uh, come on. So I'll turn it over to Don, N7WTR. He maintains our packet infrastructure. Let me stop sharing my screen and then Don can turn it over to John. Are you Unless taking a question about? Pardon me? Taking a question? Yeah, if you got any. Of course, I, I now do. I, lost. But I do, I do. One question. So uh, yeah. I have uh, an iPad. Um, and can I use an iPad for that? Like, let's say I, I'm deployed. And, Don, you're, uh, Don, you're using a tablet. What do you do? Yeah, I, an iPad will do everything but the forms. So you can send um, emails. Yeah email with an iPad. There is a app and I'll show you how to get it in my PowerPoint here when I bring it up. Okay. What would be the Any minimal, one? what would be, Don, what would be the minimal if I didn't use an iPad, because uh, I'm not exactly a techie, uh, what would be the minimal uh, computer that I would need to Windows, be able to do everything? Windows, X, Windows XP. No, it won't want on XP. No, Windows, Windows 7. 7. Windows, Windows 7. 7. No, no I, I, let me rephrase that. In terms of the, uh, uh, the equipment, uh, what kind of a computer would I need? I mean, what would I need to invest in? Just a laptop. A laptop well, computer. Well, not a Chrome laptop, not a Mac. Well, you ah. might be able to get away with a Mac, but a, a Windows laptop. Um, okay, that, that's good. That's good. And... I, I just bought one for four hundred dollars. I'm using it tonight, and it works fine. Yeah, good. Okay. So you don't you so don't need a thousand dollar laptop. A minimum of Windows Seven and above. Yeah. Anybody else got any questions? Well, then ask them to Don, and I'll back out, or I won't back out. I'll just sit aside. I'll mute my microphone. 
Okay, I'm, I'm going to figure out how to get back to exit minimized. Okay, there we go. All right, and then I'll go to share yep. screen. Yep, done. You got it. I've got my screen now. I want my uh, Zoom, or, or not my Zoom, my uh, PowerPoint. You, let, me right just, let me just mention one thing. If you click on share screen and then you click on the first thing on the top left, then you can go to any screen in case you jump and jump around. That's probably what. Oh, if I go to the out. top, I go to that one, then I can jump around. Yeah, if you yeah, oh, that way you I can go it. from one it. to another, yeah. and then we, that way you can show whatever. Yep. Thanks okay, on. I got it. And then I will go to. Are you seeing the screen now? Yep. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's not in presentation mode yet. Okay. Oh. Come on. Come on, slideshow. There we there go. There you go. Okay. Um, this started out as a presentation I made several years ago, and I whittled it down a little bit. And part of it's redundant with what Bob said, so I'm going to skip over a few things. But um, I'm going to do a review of WinLink. But I think Bob did a lot of that. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the installation, uh, the equipment setup, what local systems we have, and the packet network, and how to get out of town with the packet network if there are things that aren't working here in town. Uh, I can jump into forms. I can I have a, a break point in the middle, but I can keep on going into going back into the forms and the uh, how to attach images and I can do a demo for you on any of it. Um, and I think Bob's covered it. what Winlink is it's a radio email system that works with the internet and also with uh, direct radio. It will also use uh, microwave, it'll use satellite links, it will use satellite phone, a number of different methods of getting a signal out. Um, the overall architecture of it, uh, if you can see my mouse, there is a common message server which is housed at Amazon, which handles everything that is the internet traffic. But things don't necessarily even have to get to the internet. So the general internet of all of your service providers, uh, which might be wired, wireless, fiber optic, microwave. Um, just this past weekend, I was camping, or past week, I was camping in an area with no wires, and they had microwave link to get telephone and internet to facilities in that area. And that was the normal way that they had uh, communications. What Bob was talking about, the WinLink Express, it is down here in the bottom. It's the normal users that are everyday users of WinLink, and they contact a local or distant radio message server. Um, we have several here in town, uh, and uh, WA6MTY-10, WX7RNO-10, K7ET, NV7CC, dash 10 and W7DEM. I also forgot to mention KL7RI dash 10. Um, it is not part of the packet system. This is uh, primarily related to packet that I have listed here and HF. Uh, John has a station that does both uh, VHF Vera and HF Vera. And he'll explain some of that later. And I also show how he fits into the system here. Um, regular email users can pick up your messages you send them from the internet, which collects them from Amazon at their web servers. Oops, I jumped ahead of page. Can I ask a quick, can I ask a sure. quick question on the stage? So when I go into uh, um, WinLink Express, and I'm doing the, the telnet back and forth. Is that the thing on the bottom left, or is that the telnet on the on the middle right? It's the or combination. There, well, it depends. If you are um, using there, are, there's another not whole trying, set of not systems trying, here. Not trying to stump you, just okay. trying to understand it. Yeah. There's Telnet via the webmail. That's a form of Telnet. There's the Telnet yeah. through WinLink Express. This was the RF link here. 
but Winlink Express can oh, go. Oh, I didn't see the R up on the left. Okay, I've got it now. I and I didn't didn't draw the arrow between Winlink yeah, Express yeah, yeah, and this yeah. tail net. Right. Um, got it. And it goes up to the internet and back out to the CMS servers, yeah, which are great. housed great at Amazon. Diagram. Okay. Uh, and regular email users. So um, you want to send a emergency message to um, a doctor in the ER. If, if, let's say you're somewhere and you need to communicate with the, the ER and they, they have an email address. You can send a regular email um, from Winlink out through the whole system and back to a regular email address. And they can reply back to the field. So if you need to get instructions from the ER doctor to a nurse in the field or whatever, you can do that by passing it through. Um, let's go to the next page. For local connections, like I mentioned, we have WA6MTY, which is a direct connection to the local internet through St. Mary's hardwired connections, and also I believe their microwave connections to the internet. Uh, the National Weather Service also has WX7RNO. I manage both of these. The WX7RNO is only a radio link back to St. Mary's. So it is a slower connection, but it has a bigger footprint for where you can get radio coverage off of it. In Hidden Valley, uh, John has a good footprint for his KL7 RI-10, and it is a Vera uh, wide bandwidth uh, station on FM. It's on 145.610. All the other stations that are not Vera are 145.090. The 610 uh, is because the two methods of transmitting data are not compatible on the same frequency and they'll crash with each other. Um, John also has HF capabilities on both Vera and RDOP. And his advantage is he doesn't rely on local internet, he has Starlink. And uh, it's a high speed connection through the satellites and uh, if everything's gone to hell here, we can get a message out as long as his batteries hold out. In Truckee, there, <laughs> yeah. okay, in Truckee, there is a, um, in northwest part of Truckee, there's K6BIB-10. It's on 145.090, and it is directly connected to the local internet. It is also packet. Uh, Carson City, the uh, Division of, of Emergency Management has uh, both Vera and um, Pactor on HF and Vera on uh, two meters. And they have a, a local connection to the internet. Fallon at Swingle Bench, there's a K7ET, which has a good print, footprint of the whole Fallon area. And it, I'll get into what else it can connect to. It's on packet, it's, it's a local connection. Uh, it's Silver Springs, Lahontan Towers out there south of, or west of uh, Lake Lahontan is a site that is also connected to local packet. So those are the, the places you can get into the system. Uh, for HF, you don't, you're not really constrained locally. I tried earlier today to get to John by HF and I'm a little too close today. And I live in a bottom of a canyon, so I can't really catch him very well right now uh, on uh, the FM two meters. My signal doesn't make it through the dirt. So it bounces better earlier in the year, but summer, it doesn't seem like it's a good time for it. Um, let me go ahead a little bit further. Okay, for installing, Bob showed you some of the installation stuff. Showed you get it from winlink.org. And uh, the ultimate download is on the download button here on the right hand side of the page. Um, once you download it, you have a file that uh, you need to 
click on an execute to install it. Um, after you've installed it, you go up as Bob showed to click on WinLink Express Setup. One other thing Bob didn't mention or he uh, briefly touched upon was the grid square. You definitely have to have your grid square. It won't accept your um, uh, registration. So you can look that up and I have a link here. If you don't know your grid square, you can go to levinecentral.com ham grid square.php or you can look at a number of different um, apps on the on your phone for finding your grid square. Uh, the grid square is vitally important for getting the thing to work. Um, it is only for figuring out bearing and distance and propagation. Uh, it doesn't really markedly affect what you're doing, but it won't operate without it. Um, on the WinLink org web page, this is an example. If you go to my account, it will actually show you your name, your address. Uh, you can uh, do several things with it. The question came up about um, what about an iPad? You can go to webmail and I'll show you what webmail does here in a moment. Webmail will allow you to install effectively an app on your iPad that is a link to Telnet WinLink. It will not do forms, but it will do normal attachments and it will send messages by telnet out of your iPad. The other use of your iPad is if you're out in the field, you can do regular telnet if you have a cell phone enabled iPad that can be a hotspot. The other important thing about the back to the uh, WinLink page for your settings there's a thing called my whitelist. And on the whitelist, it is the standard email addresses that you can receive email from. As an initial status, you're barred from receiving all internet email. So that way you don't get spam and you don't have commercial activity coming into your live WinLink address. WinLink is only for the purposes of uh the uses that are allowed for amateur radio so it's for personal use not for profit not for any business use no commercial use the only thing clo closely related to commercial use is the medical or emergency or utility services in a case of emergency so you your whitelist will build itself as you send emails to uh third parties that are out on the internet if you know an agency that you want to be able to email you or a person you want to be able to email you, you manually add them to your whitelist. Um, this is the, the opening page of webmail looks like on an iPad. And um, actually it's not on an iPad. It, this is on a computer because it should, it's in Firefox what you're seeing there, but it's a, a sign in page and a place for your password. Um, opening session, so okay. Uh, Bob was showing you that you have Telnet, Packet, Pactor, all these various modes that you can send in. Uh, this is a, an example of how you'd send a message or set up your TNC. Um, if you're using a Pantronic um, TNC, you'd select the particular model over in the second box down. Uh, 1200 baud, you'd want to check the box on disable XMIT level adjust. And I think the rest of the default values are fine. The, the port number is dependent upon your particular arrangement. I don't use a uh, Cantronics very often. I have now switched and I'll show you what I'm using. This is a signal link. And you can use it for lots of different things from FT8 to WinLink to Vera. And they all work on it and um, Packet works on it. It's um, between that and a laptop, you're looking at maybe, well, 
the signal link and the cable is probably 120. So not, not a big investment. A Cantronics TNC is probably 220, 230 these days. The important things with the Cantronics is you hit parameters in it so that the, the carrier detect is software rather than a manual or a squelch level that you manually set. It is pretty effective at internally knowing uh, the difference between a signal and static. So uh, that's a good setting to have. Transmit delay of 40 milliseconds and your transmit level will depend upon the radio you're using. Some radios, uh, you have a, a ICOM or Yesu, it's probably around 100. Uh, but if you have like a Mo Motorola Max Track, it's going to be 250 to 280. Some of the ICOM, ICOMs go less than 100. Some of the ASUs go up to almost 200. It, they all vary. So you need to figure out what's the appropriate setting uh, for that, for getting your KPC3 to work properly. Um, the thing, which I mentioned, the town card, which is the signal link. Uh, is effective, and there's also things like TNCX that you can use for setting up. Uh, with you know, with Telnet, I demonstrated that already. Uh, so you can address a combination of addresses and call signs and send a message. Uh, you select a position. But it will look like it's hit start. It happens. I can actually show one here. Early Bob showed you one too, kind of. Um, you can compose. Well, let's see. Compose my pictures there. Uh, you run packet wind link. You just go to packet wind link as a second item and on the list, then open session. And back at WinLink, you can go to this up section up here on the top that says channel selection. And this works on HF or on Packet or on Vera. You can click the channel selection and it will give you the current uh, nearby stations that you can connect to, especially on Packet. You, you're not going to be getting things that are out here at 70 miles away in or 70 kilometers away in Reno. It's just not going to work over the mountains unless you go by way of a digipeter. And I can show you how that works here in a moment. Um, some of these stations that are on this list no longer exist. This was made a little while back. Um, if you're in Reno, at WA6MTY, use it. It's the best internet connection for packet. If you're not in range of that, then use the uh, weather service at WX7RNO. If you're not in either of those, uh, then you want to try um, Virginia Peak, which is something you can reach as a um, either as a node or as a digipeter. Uh, Virginia Peak as a node is VPEAK. As a digipeter, it's VPK. And I'll show that as the example in a minute. Um, looking at either National Weather Service or um, VPEAK, this one was VPEAK specifically, you can uh, use IP serial, which is just a terminal program. So you use your Cantronics. Uh, with the command CV peak, and it will show you it's you're connected, and then you can give it the end command for nodes. And these that have a dash 10 at the end of them, which I didn't highlight all of them, it looks like. Uh, anything with a dash 10 on this page is a WinLink station. So there were several available on this time. This cost. COS RMS is in Colorado Springs. It is very easily accessible from Virginia Peak. Uh, it gets to it either by going through Fallon or to St. Mary's to connect to Colorado by internet. Uh, there's a, no, a number of them on here. Uh, this IX RMS doesn't exist anymore. 
MTY RMS is the uh, St. Mary system. SR RMS is Douglas County Sheriff's Department, but we can't hit that right now. Uh, the Digipeter or packet station on Raw Peak to the south of the Carson River is down. So that's not in service. Here's a map of the things that are actually connected and usable. We have KR7 EOC, which can connect to the weather service. It also can connect to MTY, that, that's not shown uh, on this map. This linkage, MTY connects the weather service. They all connect to Virginia Peak. Spring, which is the system, oops, make it back up there, is the system down at Silver Spring. It connects to uh, both Virginia Peak and um, St. Mary's. And Bench is the system at Fallon, and it can connect to uh, Virginia Peak and uh, St. Mary's by internet. Um, Virginia Peak has a very large footprint. Uh, basically, the places that the voice signal from Virginia Peak is, you can get packet signal from there also. It's on 145.090. So it will connect you back into Reno and you can connect to the systems here. Um, it's just a, a slide showing that this is what a message looked like you receive it uh, at a regular email address when it was sent by WinLink. And it may or may not, if it's the first time, it may have this note on the bottom that says it was sent by an amateur radio station. And uh, you have to be careful on what you send back so that it doesn't violate the FCC rules. So no commercial or business purposes on that and that that's that notes on there on the first time you get one as a recipient um Jupiter, which i talked about at virginia peak uh nws which is the digipeter designation for the weather service so nws will work as a digipeter um either of those will work but the one with the greatest value is Virginia Peak because it can pick up a large geographic area and bring it back into town um, or you can get to Fallon. Um, let's see. Using a digipeter. So if you want to get to uh, St. Mary's, which is WA6MTY-10, you can put Digipeter in this first line of, a, of the packet session. It's a drop-down menu, and it either says direct Digipeter or script. If you select Digipeter and you put in VPK here, it will then create a connection. And this is an example of what it shows when it does it. It's going to WA6MTY-10 via VPK. It connects, it's done, and it's all over in 51 seconds of sending a message. Um, and it's pretty simple to do. Um, so let's say you were out at Pyramid Lake. You could get a signal from Pyramid Lake through Virginia Peak back to St. Mary's to get it into the internet. Uh, so you don't have to rely on line of sight or the normal two meter constraints. Uh, any place that Virginia Peak can hit by voice is probably usable for this uh, packet link. Um, I can okay. show you some live uh, demonstration here. I can go into a little bit on the forms. What would people prefer? All of this takes time to learn, folks. Yeah, I have, I have more below. Uh, I have my old, the script, which um, there's not much you can do with scripts right now because there's a lot of systems that have disappeared in the past two years between COVID and apathy and uh, hardware failures. There's not a lot of infrastructure out there 
so the only things that are really out there working are the ones I showed you. Um, and I think even the SNAR system's dead, at least when I checked last week. So, and it's on the wrong frequency to talk to any of this. And there's a good reason it's on the wrong frequency. Um, we can't use that frequency for Winlink because it, that signal goes over into California and um, automated systems like Winlink aren't allowed on that frequency according to their band plan and people really get bent out of shape over there. So uh, our DEM had a lot of complaints about that because they were set up, that was the only way they could actually get a signal for a while. It was going over to California to get it and for Winlink and um, that became a, an issue with the California users. I think the, the scripts is probably a whole separate lesson, so I'm not going to even talk about that uh, form. I showed you, you start creating an email, you click on the uh, template list, you can open let's say, to the ICF list and pick the form you want to use. Uh, this is what a P13 looks like. Bob showed you that. You can fill it in. It looks like this is what he couldn't show you. This is what the message would actually look like when it gets sent as an email. Um, but in this attachment is also more embedded information about the details of this including the form itself. So this is not the sole uh, place where the data exists in this body, but it is the body of the, of the message is also usable by somebody that doesn't have the proper form to view it. So that's a handy feature of the basic email. Um, and this is what it looks like when you receive it. There's a reply field in the bottom, but you don't reply to it normally you jump back to something that looks like this email when it arrived, and there's a reply button at the top of it. And that's how you reply. Yeah, here you go. The reply button at the top. You can click on that, on the reply, and it takes you to a reply form. You're down here, and... Um, you can actually have canned uh, reply data if you've already got um, a spreadsheet. You could insert some of that or uh, some canned text. Let's say somebody handed you a, PD, a um, thumb drive with uh, a table in it. You could insert that in here in this with the load 213 reply data. You pull it up off of your uh, thumb drive and insert it, and it can go. That's the end of this. I can demonstrate live. Let's do a stop sharing, and I can actually show sending something if you'd like. Any preferences on that? Or uh, do we want to jump to John? Or John and I can actually send messages back and forth, I believe, too. So that's something. Is there an interest in seeing um, a further demonstration? of? Oh, I can show a demonstration of how to attach a, um, am I sharing this yet? No, you need to turn back on your share. Okay. All right, where'd it go? Whiteboard, here we go. That's the one. Okay. All right. There you go. Okay, we can compose a message. Message. And Barry asked how to insert a picture. Okay. I'm on case success, T, if you want to just send it to me. I'm sorry, I didn't get that, Barry. Put case success, T, on the two. 
Oh, you want me to send you something? Yeah, yeah just send me a, a, a picture of some sort. I've just never done it. I've attached okay. a message, but, it, but I've never attached a, uh, or used a form, but I've never attached it. Okay. Um, what was your your call sign? Kilo, Kilo Six Sierra Tango. Oh, yeah. don't, don't forget, John's got some stuff for us. We're running out of time. Yep, I, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to attach something. And I've got, uh, let's see. Oh, I'm not sure I have anything in here. This is a new computer. I get it. But you, attach, you attach it just like you attach an email. Yep, you attach it just like an email. So um, actually where I can, I've got maybe. I like the thing that, that, that Bob was showing about how instead of explaining what it looks like, shoot a couple of pictures. Yeah, well, let me get, let me close this. Okay, I can close that and that. Okay. I have uh, sent items. I sent some pictures. Don't forget, guys, let John uh, do his presentation. Yep, that's where I'm thinking that. There. I get the idea. You just click attach. Okay. You, know, you go, thanks, John. Yeah, and if you need to resize, there's a resize function on there. And you need to resize it. Um, and Bob told you 120 kilobytes. If you're sending it by packet, that'll take you 20 minutes to half hour. If you're sending it by Vera, it could take you two, three minutes. So the smaller, the better, yeah. Well, the smaller, the better. Um, Vera can handle that easily, packet not so well. And HF even slower unless you're in Pactor or Vera. Um, I think I will stop sharing then and, okay. And go turn it over to John. And then if we want to trade or play uh, messages back and forth, we can do that show how that works. All right, let's see what we can do. Uh, let's see, let's go here. Okay, I'm pulling up Winlink Express, just like you saw before. And um, uh, the issue I want to bring up here is the fact that we run, we open a session. I'm not going to go into the intricacies of Winlink, but I'll show you how, how we work it. If I open a session and start, you guys are seeing this, I hope. You're seeing the screen? Okay. Yeah. And you, I'm, yep. I'm on Telnet right now, because here's Telnet. And I'll just start it just for the heck of it. And that's that's what I do. I interrogate the servers to see if there's any mail and it will come back in okay, to hold my- on, hold, on, hold on one sec. Can you go close your, we don't see the other thing. So if you can, if you can close your share screen, open it again and, and bring up just that top left one, John, then we can see the other pages. I see it. Well, we, we only saw the main page. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you saw uh, the main the page. Yeah, click on yeah. share screen, and then the sure. top left one. You're talking about it like we were seeing it, but oh, okay, like this one. In the top one, yeah. Then we'll be able to see it all. Okay, perfect. Now you see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Now that's, that's the start. That's the start on Telnet, and I'll do it again. And that's what runs through. And that's that's how fast uh, the system is. And by the way, this is tied to um, uh, Starlink. Okay, and um, an issue, if you bring down, uh, oh, I'm going back to the main screen. Okay, I'll have to do this again, right? No, no, you can just leave it open the whole time. What you can do is if you click share, and then you click on that first top left one. Once you do that, you can go back and forth between different screens. Okay, so if I go, you're not saying a share now, right? We're only seeing your main willing screen. Yeah, let me ask you a question. Do you have more than one uh, 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 monitor or not? No. Monitor. Well, I can click between, mo I can go between computers, but not, I don't double screen on, or double okay. on yeah. one screen now. So, so, so 
So we see the Winlink Express. If you go, are you on a comp- are you on a PC? You must be on a PC. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Go all tab. You'll be able to go to your other ones and see them. Oh, okay. But it, it's hidden behind it or something. All right. Are are you are you looking at the Telnet screen now? No. Oh. Just seeing the Winlink Express screen. The one link express screen, the one, can you see my cursor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. The other issue uh, on that, uh, you bring it back and you go to say HF one link and I'll bring up a session. And then this screen I'll go to, if I can, can I go to that screen? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, seeing, it. not seeing it. Hang on. Well, that tab is fast. Uh, Nah. Yeah, this is a little tricky. Mm. Oh, I see what's going on. All right. I'm going to drop the share and go to screen. Um, okay, now we see it. There you go. There you go. Yep. All right, you're you're seeing the the Vara. Yep. This is yep. the the Vara T. And okay, this is the uh, one link HF screen uh, to um, W seven DEM, and the frequencies will of course come up automatically for me, and then effectively I start this screen and. Oh, let's try something here. I'm gonna I'm, let's see if it'll take it. I don't know. Uh. Yeah, we're we're picking up a W seven DEM. You probably hear a bunch of noise now. We're, we're not hearing that, but you're hearing it out of your radio. Oh, you're, you got it. Yeah. yeah. Does that mean on the DEM side, uh, they get a radio listening all the time and connected to? Uh... Yeah, I'm working the One Lake Express and going to Carson City. And all and all the time, I have a gateway here that's uh, just like uh, W7DEM, it's KL7RI, they'll receive this type of information. So when you get on One Link Express and you run an FM HF, um, VARA HF, like we're doing here, this is what it looks like when it comes in, or what, what it looks like on your screen. Okay. See. Yeah. All right. Let's... Um, Let's see if I want to get to, how can I get to my, um, my tabs on my computer, Barry? Usually try, try, try holding the alt key down, pressing, okay. keep the whole, keep the alt key down and just press tab, tab, tab and see if it moves through. Normally it does on a PC. Tab, tab, tab. change in ours I want to you might just want to do it through the share screen portion yeah. and try to click on share screen and go into the one you want okay click on this uh, let's see well I usually do share screen on the top left one because then I can go to anything on the desktop which means any a share. Okay, I'm looking for. Sometimes it's under. Sometimes it's it's part of another sub tab. In other words, like if you have a email open and you've got a YouTube open, if the YouTube is on the top, you won't see the email. You have to flip it underneath. Try. Uh, I've had good success. Try going back, John, to the. the Stop the witness. Stop the uh, share screen, if you would. 
here. I'll do it for you. Okay. If I have. Yeah, I'm trying to now, get the. Now, but, yeah, now click, John, click on the uh, share screen. And then on the top left, it should say screen. There you go. Okay. Now you should be able to move around. Okay, we see that. Yep, there you go. There you okay. go. Okay. Now I need yep. to. Where's the tabs on my computer? All at the bottom, huh? Um. Okay. Yeah, let's. Got moved. Oh, excellent. Okay, I'm getting there. All right. This yeah. is the one I want to bring up. There you go. Uh, okay. Yeah. He's, you can see that. Yeah. Starlink. Okay. That is Starlink. Um, if you look at my uh, at the circle right here, this is Reno. And these are the satellites that are that are rolling over us at the present time. Right now, uh, Starlink has 1,918 satellites in service, and they have put up 2,792 at uh, at this time. And this was updated continually. Um, when you see this bar coming out of Reno, that's where I am communicating at present, and I'm picking up satellite 2543. And this is the gateway to Robbins, um, California, which it goes to our, this is right here and it's showing oh. Arbuckle, okay. California, where yeah. it's com coming up. And these shift all the time. You can watch this. See, I'm, I'm shifted already. Now I'm in Arbuckle. The big round, the big round or oval circle is your, um, that's, your that's our house. The, that, yeah, that's my house. No, but I mean, the big, the big circle. That's my, yeah, uh, that, that's that is my Europe. print. And yeah, I'll show, right. show you real quick. Um, if you take a look at um, this satellite right here, that's the coverage of that satellite for my station. I can't go any further north than that. Those are the, 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 um, the grids that the Starlink people use. And you can, you can tap on any, any um, any satellite and find out what kind of service it is. Say you got this one out here. If I can get a hold of it here. A little tricky here, and especially when the spring gets. Yeah, they're moving. <laughs> yeah, they're moving. Let me back it up here. <laughs> okay, now the the way it routes, let me get it back over so you can see the the um, what it happens. Uh, that goes into these uh, stations, and one one of the stations that's sort of interesting, I'll say this one, Panaca, Nevada. And when I was a kid, all I knew is there was an area towards up in Lincoln County called Panaca. And anyway, that's an earth station for these satellites. And this guy will transmit to these hubs. And this effectively, you go to San Jose, go to Seattle, and go to Denver, and so forth. If these systems go out um, uh, from the internet standpoint, they can go to the other uh, hubs. And if you go, if you go east, you can go to Chicago and so forth. And this is all the the Starlink uh, 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 present topology, if you will. Um, they are planning to do away with these ground stations. And what they're looking to is to put a mesh network at the satellite level. So if, if I'm up here and I need an internet service, I would go into a satellite and I could go to a satellite, to a satellite, to a satellite down in another, another location. Uh -huh. And that's on the, uh, on the futures list form. As far so as, go ahead. It would go over the horizon then. So it could, it could chase them beyond the normal range then. Yeah. It's back to another station. Right. Uh, as far as the latency and um, the performance of it, uh, on the app, uh, on your phone, it, it keeps up with it 24-7 and um, effectively tell you how many uh, devices you got on the network and, and your stats, your speed, and so forth. And uh, it has uptime, latency, and usage from your from your uh, modem. And I think, yeah, I can show it to you. I've been working on this guy. I don't know if you can see this guy or not. Yep. That's my router. That's my Starlink router. 
And uh, so far, uh, I've got it in a, a plane and it tells you what the obstacles are on the on the look angles. And uh, it's quite good because it'll tell you what's in the way and you have to move your dish to an optimum location. Um, on this uh, side, I'll bring it over. Well, I can't bring it over, but up on the right hand, it'll tell you the outage and so forth. And there's a neat feature that I, I really like. And that's your lightning storms that are going on at present. Oh. Okay. And this will give you your storm coverage. So if you're trying to work Chicago well, going east, you may have a little bit of problem with storm, storm outages and so forth. Um, your latency is provided by this, this graph right now. Right now we're on 3207. And if you look for 3207, we're running 4.45 milliseconds of latency on the satellite system. And if you ping a station on the internet, if you get 30 or 40 uh, milliseconds, you're doing pretty good. So that's the latency you get from the satellite system. It's almost nothing. Um, the concern of a lot of people is latency and speed, and both of those are a non-issue when you go to Starlink. It's been up two weeks, and it's been on, it's been 100%. Uh, in fact, I got a letter back from Starlink and said, good installation. We've had no outages on your system since you installed it. And that, that's, that was cool. All right. Um, if you look at this, it's not just, of course, Nevada. Uh, you can go anywhere in the world and do the same thing. Even, even Ukraine, if you want to. But I'm not interested in that area. I'm interested in what's happening here. Any questions on Starlink? Yeah, a couple of quick ones. Um, what's the size of the dish, roughly? Small? OK. Um, How do you aim it? OK, let me, let me see if I email inbox. See if I can get this guy to work. Uh -huh. thing, huh? You got it? Yep. Yep, there's my dish on the on the peak of my house. That's the size of it. It's smaller than a dish network. Uh, when you turn it on, it's it's flat. And it takes about five minutes, and then it positions in the the direction, the, the best direction. And then all your tracking is done electronically. Inside that dish, there's 609 antennas, and they're all uh, phased arrays, and they actually track electronically in that array. There's nothing that, uh, like the old school, where you had to have a dish that pointed to your satellites. It's all electronic now. Great. Okay. Thanks for showing me. Yeah. Any, any other questions before I leave Star? Oh, on Starlink here at the house, I have put in what they call uh, Ubiqu Ubiquity Edge Router X, which has a, a failover feature. And uh, I can have it on the, uh, um, the terrestrial internet. And if it fails, it will go to the Starlink uh, automatically and vice versa. So your redundancy, they both would have to go out to lose internet access here uh, at this house. And uh, Don mentioned something about if, until I run out of power, I've got 50 hours of generator time at this house. Um, and beyond that, I'll be leaving probably. Uh, let's see, I wanted to go to live information this this is from your one link site and this gives you an idea this was taken this morning and let me back out a little bit so you can see get a picture of it and these these uh lines are colored coded by um bands the uh, res 80 and 40 and so forth 
And this morning, um, I got up and I ran from Reno various test areas. Okay, I went to Hawaii, uh, went to Soldotna, Alaska, went to Fairbanks, Alaska, uh, went to Whitehorse, uh, went to, that's, that's another one. Let me, let me crank it up a little more. So this gives you the power of being able to get out of Reno if you need to. This is a DAV, this is Salt Lake. This happens to be the police station, by the way, in Salt Lake. This is OAT, another user in Salt Lake. This is N5 TWs in Austin, Texas. This is in Arizona in Wickenburg. Um, NOJ is in Wickenburg. What's this other one here? Oh, K0000, that's in Las Vegas. Yes, KL7RI to John Arbach and Smith Valley and DEM. And you can see others that came in. This morning we had a packet transmission from K7KBJ into WA6MTY. And at DEM in Carson City, we had a KF7RQ coming in the W7DEM. And of course, I came in also. And that gives you an idea how you can track or look at these issues about uh, getting out of Reno if you need internet, if the internet's not here. And that gives you quite a capability when you, when you take a look at it. Now I'm gonna refresh the screen. This was this morning. And I'll show you what's happened. Um, Daryl made some transmissions and uh, Well, let's back off. Yes, there's a transmission here. K5VP, who is in uh, near Portland, Oregon, uh, talked to K4, VK4YOI in Australia. And of course, it gives the date timestamp. And uh, let's go into Reno. And this is as of the present time. And that's Salt Lake. Let's get over to Reno. Okay, we have several. Okay, we've got uh, Don went to St. Mary's. Don went to my station. Don went to Las Vegas. It all came out of Don's grid square. Uh, Daryl went to San Rafael and he went to DEM and he's in the same grid square that I'm in. And what's this one? KC7OM came into KL7RI and dropped into the, to the uh, internet. And we have two packets up here, K7B, KBJ and KJ7DHY, Ed came into St. Mary's. Now, the, the beauty of this thing, this is for the last six hours. You got a little bar at the top. And if you want to go back to, uh, I'll say, 24 hours, it'll give you the activity out of the Reno area. It's a very good, very good handy tool. Um, the RMS map provides information. Uh, these are all the the, the modes at the top, we've got packet, Pactor, another Pactor type, RDOP, VARA, and VARA FM uh, services under public. So if you want to pack, look at the Pactor stations available, you can go into the one link information and pull them up. And we have W7DEM and it gives you the frequencies and the Pactor, and we're at Pactor 3 on the amateur side. Okay, if you want to go to RDOP, we got uh, we got one RDOP station, and that's mine. I run RDOP and VARA HF. Uh, if you look at the VARA, we are, we're getting more populated now. We've got uh, W7JKV and Elko. You've got uh, KL7RI, of course, and the frequencies. 
And you've got DEM and the frequencies, of course. And you've got John, KD7NHC. And you've got uh, KO0000 in Las Vegas. And they're all on VARA. Okay, and if you look at VARA FM, a little center, we got um, PAL7RI-10. And, you know, you just don't have to memorize or write these things down. It's just all on a map. And W7DEM. And uh, I think that's KJ6. Yeah, KJ6IX is up on two meters. And he's on in Minden. Gardnerville area, and we've got KO, K7CCN-10 in Las Vegas. And that gives you an idea on that side. So that, that gives you an idea. This wind link um, system is your uh, Bible, if you will. It gives you my account, which has been uh, demonstrated earlier. These are under tools. Uh, and if you think you got a, a problem, it'll give you the CMS status and it'll tell you what's running and what isn't uh, and, and the traffic analysis. And they'll tell you the RMS versions, the user versions, and you can go in and find out stations that are not up to date or whatever. And uh, you can go into your downloads and this was, you got sysop sys downloads, you got user programs, you go into users, and you can find your OneLink Express install and on the on the site. So excellent, uh, excellent site to work with. Okay, another one that I work with is this guy. This this situation right in here is what's given us so much trouble on the HF bands. It's called solar flares, and it's due to our sunspots mm -hmm. and our issues with uh, CMEs. And it's an excellent site. And what I do is I go in and I'll look at the, the attenuation that's caused by our flares. And uh, today we had a nice big one over the United States. And uh, guess what? Our HF was the pits. We had on 80 meters, we had a 25 dB loss. Ooh. Okay. So if you wanted to run 80 meters during this time frame. Forget it. You're you're gonna be talking to yourself. Um, and of course, as you go up in frequency, the attenuation drops. So if you get up to about 20 meters down to 80 meters, it it really shows up. It's a real good site. That's um, your oh, what's the name of this? Uh, it's under the NOAA and the NASA it's NOAA Space Weather Prediction site. And they also give you predictions and all this good stuff. There's two areas that'll just burn us up bad. Geomagnetic activity. It's just these guys, when they get up in G1 and G2, we're in trouble. And if you get up into class C or uh, especially the class M flares, we really take a hit. In fact, it'll even tell you HF radio, weak and minor degradation of HF radio communications on sunlit side, occasional loss of radio contact. Obviously, it's not written by an amateur. It's called noise, 20 dB over S9. Yeah. Another, another area that's helpful is the VOA, the Voice of America. It's actually voacap.com. And this provides you, um, actually, if, uh, let's see if I can get rid of, well, uh, let's see if I can do it this way. Yeah prop wheel there we go i can do that you can put up a prop what they call a prop wheel and there's other ways to look at it and then you tell you what the propagation is and i've got of course reno going to melbourne australia and you look at the time is 20 the gmt is 2031 you go to 2030 and they say yeah good luck uh, 15 and 17 meters, you might make it, but as the as you go later in the night, especially around 2300, you start getting into some. Um, well, here's one at 20 meters. You can get in about five percent of the time. 
but you need the reds to get into and you get a 99 percent on 17 at, at zero zero hours into australia that's it's a good site to work with when you work with this okay um uh, any questions on how we handle the gateways the gateways here are hf gateway and the vara and i think don showed you these guys and this is all i have this is my go kit on vara fm and a computer that's it and uh, let me let me go on to the computer here that you won't can you hear that? That's your Vara FM. And it's coming off of this uh, Anytone. And I'm running one watt. Uh, and uh, the Aries had a... Uh, session out at uh, Redfield College. And we were, Daryl and I were running uh, VAR FM out of the college and we were completely surprised on the, the capability of that, uh, that system. So, uh, and that, that's the, it's high speed and you can run, run pictures. Now, when you run pictures on Windlink, please, please don't run huge pictures because it just ties the system up. Um, um, it's horrible. Uh, it'll come in, and if you come in on on HF, uh, it'll usually time out. It'll it'll work on it for thirty minutes, and after thirty minutes, it uh, shuts down and says it's too large of uh, of a message. You have to get them down, and you can get those pictures down to five K if you work at it. Yeah. Any questions at this point? Well, I have a couple of questions, but not exactly about Starlink. So I'll just throw it out to uh, all of you guys. This is an excellent presentation. I, I'm a newbie, basically newbie ham, uh, number one, and uh, newbie to Aries, of course. Um, it, it, I have two questions. One, um, will the recording of this program tonight be available? How do I get hold of it uh, through Bob or otherwise? That's one question. Second question is, uh, Bob kept emphasizing practice, practice, practice with Winlink. Uh, are there tutorials available? Uh, because it's one thing saying practice, but if you don't know what you're doing to begin with, uh, you're going to be practicing ineffectively. Uh, there, are, there are tons of videos, YouTube videos out there. Got it. Okay, thanks, Bob. And yeah. what about what about a recording of this of this presentation this evening? Check with Barry. Okay. Okay, let's uh, let's just take a look at when link. Okay, you want to start in? How much time do you want to watch? <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, it's it's just phenomenal. Every aspect of it. Someone's has something to talk about. I mean, this this is the edge router that I have. This is a, a littler one. But this is the guy that I use for failover. I have two LANs in and one, no, two wide area net, WANs in and a LAN out. There you go. But anyway, that's that's uh, the unit I'm using. Um, you'll also get a, a, a when link, um, people themselves put a series of videos out and you'll find those in here also. I mean, it's 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 whatever you want to look at. Cool. Okay. As far as the recording goes, I'll have to confer with Barry about how to get this into a place where you can get it. Oh, it's on your computer there, David. It's on my computer, right? Yes. The the problem with it, David, is the size, and you can't email it. Generally, it's too no, large. I know. I know. So, so you, you either have to carry it or get it on uh, oh Dropbox or something like that mm. on a on a cloud. Upload it to uh, um, oh you know <laughs> Dropbox. 
Well, that's one way to do it. Um, yeah. And it, we'll figure it out. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Back to you, Bob, for finishing up. And I'll I'll drop this thing down now. So. Excellent, John and Don. Thank you very much for filling in beyond me, since mine was so short. Barry, you still there? Barry, what? Are you? Anybody else got any questions? Anyway, practice, practice, practice. If you need more help, uh, uh, send me an email, wa6mdygbis.com, and I will forward it to whomever. We're all here uh, the first Saturday of every month up here at the regional EOC on 5195 Spectrum is our monthly Aries training. Um, you can meet these guys and start picking their brains. Um, it, it, you're not going to learn all this in tonight's presentation by any means. And that's a two-way street, by the way. I can pick yours, too. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. We, do, we all do. Um, there are quite a few of us that are active in one form. I learned a lot tonight that I didn't even know or didn't remember one or the other. But... Uh, <laughs> It's the okay. same thing. Huh? I said it's the same thing. Yep. yep. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for showing. Uh, maybe Barry will probably send out the link to the uh, recording. Uh, but I don't know how long it's good for because uh, uh, they, the, uh, you know, it ties up a lot of, of uh, gigabytes. So I don't know how long it'll be available through the SNARS website. What, what I have done with these before is upload them to YouTube, and then they're oh, that's that's available. a good idea. You don't. I, I don't think Barry was recording it. Just David. Yeah. Right. Well, David was calling. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Okay. Anyway, I don't think you want me on YouTube anyway, so it's just as well. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave. I got to get out of here. Hey, thanks. Right. Good night. Thanks so hey. much. Yeah, thanks, Charles. Great program. Yeah, thanks.